Carrie Fraser. I'm here at Mount St. Mary Hospital with Ann McCaffrey, and she's the Director of Pastoral and Volunteer Care. Hi, Ann. Hello. Can you tell me a little bit about what pastoral care is? Well, pastoral care, there's a huge range of what pastoral care is all about. It's uh, dealing with matters of the heart with people. Um, here at Mount St. Mary we have a wonderful legacy of the Sisters of St. Anne and who themselves have taken on um, the healing ministry of Jesus, which is to reach out to the marginalized, the oppressed, those um, to bring joy where there's mourning, to uh, bring beauty where there's been ashes. Um, and so that is the foundation here that of pastoral care. So here we um, have sort of two parts to pastoral care. There's um, the religious and faith traditions um, and then there's also the, the spiritual care and with a lot of people those are one and the same and some people they're not uh, the same. And so here we look at the individual resident and see their needs and see what um, what is best going to help them to live fully and richly in their time here. And how do volunteers, how are they involved in pastoral care? Uh, well, we have a lot of volunteers that help with the chapel services. We have a number of denominations that um, offer services, so they're mostly volunteer run. And we have volunteers that also go to get the residents, bring them to the chapel. We have, um, and they, it makes such a difference in the residents. Um, both the connection, creating community, where they um, actually get to know the volunteers, and also in uh, giving them the, uh, the opportunity to live out their faith and their values. And, um, Sometimes when people can enter into a worship service, they can transcend the, the temporal. They can gain an eternal perspective, as it were, and um, realize that, uh, that the issues that they go through are, part, are only part of life. And, you know, pastoral and spiritual care is all about reigniting hope in people. It's um, when a person is hopeless, no pill is going to fix that hopelessness. It um, it really requires bringing, um, having people to break the isolation, to remind them of what has brought them hope in the past. So volunteers play a huge role. It's not just them giving their one or two hours. It's actually transforming lives in a they get support and training to learn how to do that, as I understand it, and thanks to a lot of donor um, support, we're able to provide some training. What is some of the training that uh, has been done with volunteers and that you hope to do with volunteers? Over the past years, palliative volunteers have received some training and um, in more um, pastoral and spiritual care training. Certainly any of the grief training that our volunteers have done, they get to use it every day that they're here. There's some spiritual uh, care programs that I would really love a lot of our volunteers to be involved with. Um, the training, equipping people, it goes so far to uh, training people's ear, training people's heart as to what to listen for, what to listen to, how to listen. Um, to our residents and um, that that just makes so much of a difference when people don't just have a friendly visit friendly visits are wonderful they break the isolation they create community but when a person can actually have the skill to go that one step further to really listen to the heart to listen to how are they relating to God how are they relating to themselves how are they relating to their families to their community to things, um, you know, to have people with the skill that can help people uh, move people into a little bit more of a wholeness in their living and life. You talk about uh, moving people into a wholeness in their living and their life. When residents 
first come here, they often have to give up their homes, their possessions, their connections to the community in a lot of ways. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about how, how pastoral care, how yourself and how the volunteers that support the program would help a resident in that transition, a resident and their family? Uh, a really big component of spiritual health is um, relatedness, how we relate to God, to others, to ourselves, to things. Um, a lot of times, as you say, Carrie, when people come into care, they've uh, worked their whole lives for things. Part of their identity is in what they own. And, um, and then they come here and they have to give it all up. So there's a huge grief there. And so to be able to listen to people's stories, to listen to what's been important to them, um, just helps them to move along. Uh, sometimes helping people say goodbye. I remember with one person that came into care from acute care and was not even able to visit her home before she came into uh, complex care. And she had to uh, she was just absolutely at a loss because she had no way of saying goodbye to all of these things that have been so important to her. So I just came in, the way I offered care for her was to actually get her to visualize going through her home and what was important, what was in this cupboard, and saying goodbye to each aspect of, of her home and her belongings. And then, at the end of that little exercise, she said, Okay, I'm ready now. Now I can move. Now I'll be okay. And that kind of uh, care just makes a difference in people. Thank you, Anne. And the Sisters of St. Anne Legacy Endowment Fund helps to support pastoral and volunteer care as well as resident activities. So please consider a gift. Thank you.